Same thing. We weren't allowed to cut their hair. We weren't allowed to, you know, yeah. just no representation. Okay. So then let's go back. So there, there there's a, this appeal happening. It's going on and it's going on. And here we are. It's the following summer, June of 1943. And there's some sailors and, you know, sailors, when they come to town, they put on their outfits and they walk around. You, know, you live in San Francisco. I live in New York. We yeah. see them. It's cute. Yeah, it's just like anchors away. Yes, it's just like that. They go across the, the Brooklyn or, Bridge singing. Yeah, or or out on the town or whatever it's called. Yeah, or it's a very just, special they, episode. They link arms and they, they, and they dance and they sing. <laughs> or it's yeah. an episode of um, Sex and the City. They, remember that when they had like the Fleet oh, yes. Week episode? <laughs> yes. We get Fleet Week here in San Francisco, yes. Yeah, we get it in New York too. And it's, mm-hmm. it's just a thing. My brother was in, by the way, my brother was in the Navy for like 15 years. I kind of know the culture. I know, I mean, he would mm-hmm. never wear his suit when he was walking around. That was like a thing for him because he wanted to blend in. Mm. He just, yeah, went, no, I, I see people all the time yeah. in their uniforms during Fleet Week here. I always yeah. got a smile it's at a them. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm always like, you know, hey, howdy. howdy. You know, well, howdy. Well, howdy. Well, think about Hi, it. Hi, sailor. <laughs> Hi. Mm. You're single now, you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, where was I? Let me think for a second. Sailors. Uh, sailors. <laughs> See? <laughs> Man. <laughs> Margo's got semen on the brain. <laughs> the sailors show up. They show up in LA. They're going to be shipped out. They're going to, you know, they're, they're putting their lives on the line. And everywhere they go, they're treated like a hero. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them decided it's late in Los Angeles. Let me just go to a neighborhood I don't know and just walk around and see what happens. And there were some toughs, Mexican-American toughs, that gave them a hard time. I think it was around the 38th Street area. One of them got kind of roughed up, goes back to the base and says, I just got jumped by a bunch of Mexicans. And Mm. I'm really mad. Will you come with me and we'll get some justice going? What were they looking like? Oh, they're Mexican and they're wearing zoot suits. Zoot suits? What? Uh, we need to de-zoot them, don't we? Yes. That'll fix it. That'll fix it. So these sailors are coming up by the dozen. And they're just walking around these neighborhoods. And they're getting more and more pissed off. They're carrying chains. They're carrying baseball bats shivs their tire irons they're just carrying whatever they've got on them Uh, and they start beating people and they're getting away with it of course it goes on for almost a week holy shit all week it's hundreds of these sailors and there were people who drove them around who said it was their duty to help american soldiers and i have to say i forgot duty this is what I need to say also. Some of them, a lot of them, grew up all over the country, probably never even met a Mexican person before, mm-hmm. never seen the ocean. Like they're from some place where they've this is all right. exotic and therefore strange to them. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons they're just walking around and looking. Like, well, what's over here? Whereas yeah. I grew up in the city. Like, you don't do that. <laughs> it's like <a> yeah. Sh- <laughs> so that's also a part of it. But people were driving them. If they didn't see a Mexican American, if they saw an African American, that's close enough. If they're just looking to beat up people, they're looking to beat up people, and they've got their eyes mainly on men. Men meaning twelve to twenty-five year olds, once again. So <sighs> twelve, yeah. It started to escalate when one guy got ballsy enough that he went into a movie theater, and he told the manager, "Turn on the lights. I want to see who's in your audience." So they turn on the lights. They stop the movie. These guys patrol this movie theater and they start dragging people out that they see in zoot suits. Fucked up. Then they're that's ratcheting up again. Then it becomes you can't just find them. You can't just beat them up. You need to take their suits off of them. So they're stripping them. They're beating them up and taking all their clothes off of them. And what the fuck? Peeing on their zoot suits, lighting them on fire. Oh my god. So the cops get called. And what do the cops do? When you see Beat a shivering take- <laughs> Yes. When you see a naked shivering man, you know, hiding in an alleyway desperate to just get home because they're just freaked out, you arrest him and you let the sailors go. Or you give the sailors a, a ride back to the ship. Such bullshit. Such bullshit. 
this just goes on for days and days and days. It finally stops, but the tension never really kind of goes away. But at that, though, when they talk about the Zoot Suit Riot from that nifty little song, that's yes. what they're talking about. Oh, see, I thought it was just some kids that wanted to swing dance and no. they're nerds. <laughs> Man, what? Totally different. Yeah. It's so fucked up. So the, what happens with the trial, so eventually the verdict is overturned. Most of these guys, they're let go. And one of the jailhouse dudes, you know, guard says, well, they'll be back. You know, there's always somebody. Yeah. And a couple of them did have issues after yeah. that. You know, it just, it's it wasn't great. Hank eventually had his own restaurant and he was able to hire his family. Oh, that's cool. Which was cool. He was sort of looked up to in the neighborhood. He was a little, you know, older and smarter. He died of a heart attack at 48. Oh, man, that's yeah. super young. Years later, one of the men that was on trial, no, one of the women, excuse me, one of the women that was sent to the reform school. Jesus. When she was on her deathbed, she said she put up with it and she did it because it was her younger brother that was in the gang that beat up Jose. And she didn't want her little brother to get in trouble. And all that happened was Jose went to a party and he got really fucking wasted and didn't know how to get home. And so he just kind of attached himself to the wrong people. Yeah. And people, when they're drunk, they get in fights and they say stupid shit and they shove each other around. And he got into the melee and her. Not me. I act like a model citizen. Oh, I I'm always. Drunk. Yeah, I've never been in a fight. What are you talking about? No, I'm perfect and never say anything wrong. But that's what happened is that her, yeah. her little brother was in just this, this. He just happened to get caught up with the wrong group of people and he he, he died. That's it, sad. It's terribly sad. They've never opened up his case after that. It's never been settled. The little brother that she talked about. He died by suicide because he felt so guilty about it. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. Later on, there was Zoot Suit the play and then Zoot Suit the movie. And Zoot Suits have been featured in movies and like the Janet Jackson video. But the Zoot Suit riots, and I don't know if you even want to film it today. I think it would be too intense. Just the description I feel like it would be pictures. Hard. Yeah, it would be hard to watch. It's, yeah, super hard to watch. But that's... Our creep today is sort of a creepy moment in history. So it's the Sleepy Lagoon murder and the Zoot Suit riots. That is a really good job, Margot. I had never, never heard this. I only knew the song and didn't bother to ever Google it and find out why. <laughs> because, because for reasons. So good job. Thank you. There's, I really recommend the video if you can get it i put the youtube link in there it's for american experience about the the murders and all of that involved it was but it, it, i thought it was just really interesting but i mean and this is like you know of 10 years ago my friend's son graduated from college and was going to be a new york cop we were talking about mexicans and he was just like well you know they're all bringing drugs here they're all doing this i'm like oh. i'm like first of all you're puerto rican isn't there any sort of like you know, kinship right. with somebody who's also Latino, but no, he just, no. he just bought this, you know, hook, line and sinker too. And I had yeah. to like talk to him like, no, that's not true. Yeah. And we, I mean, we just had this here in, in, in America with when Donald Trump, when former mm -hmm. disgraced president, Donald Trump Putin's announced friend. he's running, what? Yeah. Putin's friend, Trump, he, his, in his announcement that yes. I, he's running for president, he said, the most awful things about Mexicans. Like, they're not sending their best people. They're all racists and drug addicts. Blah. Rapists. Like, it's just, yeah, it's fucking gross. I was like the rapist talking about how all Mexicans are rapists. Right. That's like, hilarious. He's trash. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to mention that because this is something like this was 80 years ago and people are still thinking yeah. this way. Yeah. So... Do you want to hear about some non-creeps? Yes, please. Okay. So I decided not to go with a person. You went You went with an event, so I'm kind of going with it. I guess I could say it's an event, too. So we have a couple of big things going on. One's in the world, mm -hmm. and one is here. So let's start with, let's start with the one that's here. So right now in Texas, they are 
the governor has signed, I guess it's, I don't know if it's a law yet. He's trying to make it law. He's trying to make it law, which is basically it's a law to make it that if children are trans, that is child abuse and that they would charge the parents with child abuse and take the children away. It's beyond evil. Right. It is like going after people who are already super vulnerable. This is, it's also, it's just like these fucking made up stories about Mm -hmm. like parents, like letting like little kids get gender reassignments or like none of these things are happening. It's all bananas and it's just very upsetting. And there's a lot of people in Texas who like have children that maybe don't identify yeah, or maybe they're non-binary mm-hmm. or they're questioning, you know, questioning and they're legit afraid for their children. There's a lot of organizations right now that you could donate to to help uh, fight the this proposed law and also help these families. Like mm-hmm. some of them are seriously thinking about like relocating. You well, know. people say that, but it's like. That's expensive to relocate. Yeah, yeah, because people say shit like, well, they're like, well, they just leave Texas. Have you tried moving? Yeah. That shit's fucking expensive. Right. It's expensive. I I am at, like, I would, if there was, like, something here in California where they were, like, they were going to discriminate against autistic children, I, of course I'd want to get the fuck out of here. But do you mm-hmm. know how hard it would be? Like, yeah. it's super hard. So there's a lot of organizations you can donate, and I'm going to, we're going to list them in the show notes and I just wanted to give them a shout out here. So there's one called tent yep. and it's the trans transgender education network of Texas. They are a great place to donate to. There is Texas trans kids. So it's like TX trans And it's a resource for trans youth in Texas and it helps them fight for their rights, you know, in courts, legislation, uh, local government schools, things like that. Um, there's Equality Texas, which is a political adv- advocacy group that will help. There is uh, Lambda Legal mm-hmm. that uh, fights cases that protect and advance their rights. Um, there's Trans Youth Family Allies. There is Algo, which is an Austin-based organization. And then there's the Trans Pride Initiative. And they also, like, they advocate for trans rights in education, healthcare, housing, and employment. Like I said, we're going to put them all in the show notes. So if you want to donate, I mean, you could donate a couple of bucks or if you can't, I think some of these actually have like volunteer things that you could do, or you could just like sign up to make some calls. Mm -hmm. You could send postcards to representatives, write letters. I love to drunk dial my representatives. (laughs) I do it all the time. I, they're on my speed dial. I'm holding up my phone. They're on my speed dial. I have a beer and I leave Nancy Pelosi some shitty message. You know, at like midnight where I'm like, and another thing, Nancy Pelosi. Blah, blah, blah. One, star, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> one star, Nancy Pelosi. One star, one star, one star. Do not recommend. I don't like the sound of your voice and I don't like the way you breathe. One star. But, you know, um, you could call your representatives. You could call representatives in Texas. Like, let them know. Also, there is an election happening in Texas and the governor is running against Beto O'Rourke mm-hmm. and you could donate to Beto O'Rourke if you want. There are little things you can do. I should, And then go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that um, one of our shows that we're really passionate about is F This Movie. And yes. right now, and it's the letter F and then this movie, and they just talk about movies. That's their whole thing. If you donate to one of these charities and you send them the receipt and you can follow them on Twitter at F This Movie, they will put you in for a drawing and they're going to pick three people that get to pick the movie that they're going to talk about. So they do like a really in-depth discussion, much like we do with Dorking Out, which yes. we'll talk about in a minute. But if you donate to one of those charities that Sonia just mentioned, you could also be in to have a whole episode on a movie you love by really cool yeah. people. Yeah, and the that show is always mm-hmm. like so insightful and so funny, and they are such good people. Mm-hmm. Thank you for for pointing that out to everybody. You could 
maybe get an episode that's Patrick and Adam talking oh. about uh, another Keeper Sutherland movie just so that they'll do their Keeper Sutherland impression <laughs> that makes me laugh so hard I cry. Or Mark Wahlberg. Like, 